I first want to talk about the the compound censored merger just kind of one last time because I'd hinted at it here and there. Um, and I know for anybody who has been following the story, you've probably heard if you're if, if you're a censored TV subscriber, you've heard Gavin's point of view. I know. Uh, has Gino been mentioning it on his live stream? Sure, he has. He talked about it on the Real Ass podcast, which I think maybe came out a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. He talked and, about it on his stream the other day too. Yeah, and Kiki's been mentioning it here and there, but I haven't fully. So, so like I'm gonna really quickly recap. So on June 19th, Juneteenth, I wasn't there because I'm only there on Mondays. It was a Wednesday. Gavin uh, McGinnis, who's the head honcho at Censored TV, and he every Wednesday does a show with Anthony Cumia. It's called like Compound Censored, and he's been doing that for at least a year, um, for a while now. And he he tech group texted everybody, big meeting, and we were all excited, like, oh god, what could be happening? And then I was like, ooh, I bet. I I, I was like, I I had a feeling. Um, I didn't think everyone was going to lose their jobs, but that's, that's basically what happened. So he, and I didn't, I wasn't able to attend the meeting and I was like, I can't make it. And he's like, Oh, I'll just call you later. And I was like, okay. So mm -hmm. at around six o'clock, he has all the booth boys. So there's what three booth boys, Steve Garrett and drew. And then, then Luby is a Luby. booth girl. Yeah. Luby's a booth girl, booth woman. Booth no, woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> and she's sort of like, she just she's like a jack of all trades. She does uh she did like sort of social media for compound and like some intern stuff. Um, but so she was there too. Uh Eric Nagel, who was our general manager, was uh was there. And then Kumia, I think, Skyped in or zoomed in. And then uh I think Gino was there. Uh, gosh, and that that might have been it at this point. And, they, drunk Jimmy was probably there. Drunk Jimmy probably, <laughs> and they had gotten rid of shows here and there. And I thought I was like, "Huh, this is strange." I thought, you know, when you get rid of shows, you should be actively seeking out new talent and new shows to bring on. And I've recommended like so many people over the years that Compound should look at and try to scoop up. Uh, which I feel like fell on deaf ears, but that's neither here nor there. So the meeting was basically Gavin saying, uh, Compound Media and Censor TV have merged and you're all fired. And people thought this was a joke and it was not a joke. And at one point, and this is why it's been kind of tricky, I think for definitely myself, I think also Gino, but I don't want to entirely speak for him. And uh, because then Gavin followed it up with saying, oh, the only people that are that have profitable here are Gino and Chrissy. They're their shows. I mean, other than obviously Kumia. Um, so we were the only two that were not fired outright. And the rumor was, oh, that that we will both be brought into censored TV and make the same that we were making a compound. And that was. Kind of just, I, I, I mean, I'm sure, I think Gavin had said that in the beginning. I mean, I wouldn't have pulled that out of my ass. I think that may have been, you know, and again, there was no like official, you know, offer. It's that's just. That's what he said to you guys. I think that's what yeah. he said. Yeah. Maybe on that initial phone call. Because I remember he called right. me and he said, everyone's been fired. <laughs> For you and Gino. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Um and he must have and Gina was at that meeting, wasn't he? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I figure, oh gosh. And I had been, you know, a lot of us had seen the writing on the wall. Kumi had moved to South Carolina. And I, I kept thinking, like, if the studio closes down, I can't like wet spot is over. You can't replicate that show. It was for those of you who hadn't seen it, it was in studio fans that would come in and watch on the bleachers, which all which they ended up becoming an integral part of the show. The, be the bleacher creatures, like we would go to them all the time. If we needed volunteers for things, we would ask their input. Um, they were like the peanut gallery. I, I came to let first they had irritated me and then they became, uh, you know, you know, when you leave the back door open and like some raccoons come in and then you like keep feeding them and then they don't go away. That was kind of the situation we had. But by the end, I was like, I love these little guys, even though they all have rabies. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, it's not like I could have 
the bleacher creatures who live all over the five boroughs come to my house in Westchester. I'm not going to have adult film stars come to the house in Westchester. No, I like, yeah. and, and even if they would like, you know, a lot of them were in town for various gigs. They're not going to want to like get on a train and then go an additional 45, 50 minutes. Uh, mm. Maybe some would, but not all. That was the, the, the great part about having compound media studios right in the heart of Manhattan, right in Herald square. It was very accessible. Um, and there's no way to replicate the dynamics with the booth boys. You know, it was just how that studio was set up, how you could quickly cut to the booth and banter with them. And that was also a big part of Gino's show too, was the banter with the booth and the in-studio guests. And, um, so the initial kind of who you know offer or the thing that Gavin told us was, oh, you can uh, you'll be paid what you were paid a compound, and uh, that'll be that. And and then at one point it became, well, you have to do it from your home. Uh, you have to do it from your home studio, which I had, was already renovating. Thank God, because I had a feeling that this day would come, and I you know I had done that give send go. And the wall, by the way, wallpaper is up. The <sighs> furniture comes in tomorrow because I know a couple of you have been asking what the status is. Furniture comes in tomorrow uh, and then some more equipment. Then we're going to start really putting it together. Very exciting. Um, but anyway, the the miracle, the miracle, the magic of wet spot can't be replicated in anything other than that studio or one very similar to it. So um, and then what I hadn't realized is that in Gavin had in his mind that um, like he wanted everything fully merged by July 4th. And I had no idea that that was this, you know, <laughs> date in his mind for when he wanted everything together. And, uh, so I just thought like, oh, me and Gino, like have some time to figure some things out or I thought I had some time to figure some things out. And so I figured, and I, you know, I had spoke to, you know, uh, the finance guy at, and censored and i was like all right he was like yeah you could just throw me like a crayon contract like just draft up some you know some things that you want or whatever um because i was like i have a baby i kind of need a, i need something i don't need the most detailed contract ever but i'm like i need i'm not an idiot like i i need something i need mm -hmm. something in writing it doesn't have to be i didn't i don't have to have a schedule b or something but and uh i had worked for compound for six years without a contract and um so you're probably thinking like oh why couldn't you just do that it's like no i don't know gavin like i know like i knew anthony and um and i was doing it for i'm not gonna like say what i got paid because I, I guess that's not very classy but like i was doing it for for very little for for less than i could make just here on youtube and i i did that because i felt very loyal to compound media very loyal to anthony and um, I knew I could be making more elsewhere, especially when you factor in like the commute and I had to pay, you know, I was paying Andrew Harms to be there every week as the announcer. And I when I would be out of town, I would pay the guest hosts um, all like out of pockets. And I would, you know, God, the amount of money I would spend at Sullivan's and bread, white claws for the guests and cakes yeah. for people's birthdays and props and decorations and like McDonald's gag, yeah. you know, things I like that. I could have been like yeah. way cheap. I probably spend too much money. Like that's on me. I, I probably buy too much frivolous shit. But again, I was like not, I was, you know, I wasn't doing this show like for the money to just make it clear. And so I was like, well, you know, censored had like, I don't know what more viewers or more subs than compound. I don't know if the number was like 20 K or I could be wrong. Um, I don't know. That's kind of irrelevant, I guess, but I figured, okay, they've got a lot more viewers. I, I want to renegotiate a little bit. So, and so the whole, like you're doing it for the same amount was not going to be good enough for me. And then at one point, Gavin's like, well, you guys, and at, at one point we were going to do it from, uh, the studio he has. So we checked out the studio and at one point it was like, okay, do it from the studio. And, and at one point we, we could have guests. Uh, and then, and then Gavin was like, no guests and you have to do it at home. And then he had at one point had offered X amount to, to like have us fix up our home studios. And then the next moment it was way less the amount of money that he would give us to, to, you know, fix up our studio. So we, we felt kind of I definitely felt jerked around. I was like, I don't know if I can trust any of this because everything keeps changing. 
and uh and i can't do the same show at my home as i could in the studio so i was like it'll have to be something else that i come up with and uh basically like, we could not come to an agreement like i just wrote back like that's not gonna be good enough for me and 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 Gavin was just, just wrote back that sucks <laughs> like that was it uh as far as the <laughs> you know, professionalism goes oh, but again like uh and, and it's i want to say like no hard hard feelings it's i'm i'm trying to be like professional here but like and and some people and i see all the comments that fans have made over the past few weeks like some people are pissed at anthony i could never be pissed at anthony he was at my wedding i mean gavin was at my wedding too but um you know anthony's been through a lot and uh i understand why he did what he did and i just yeah, I, I hope it's no hard feelings with Gavin. It just didn't it didn't make financial sense for me. So in that sense, it, it's not really personal. So yes, Gavin is quite frugal. And another <laughs> aspect of the deal he wanted to do was a 70-30 split on subs that I brought in, which didn't make sense because I've been at Compound Media six years. Everybody that was watching me, that was, you know, that came to know me from YouTube or from some somewhere else from stand up and then subbed to compound. They'd already been subbed. So that 70 30 split. So I'm like, okay, that's based on new subscribers that I bring in, which doesn't make sense because anyone who's watching is already watching and is already integrated. You know, the subs all got mushed together. So uh, I don't know if I explained that well, but anyway, it's not going to work out with me and censored. So I wanted people to know, cause I, I I don't know if some people are still subbed because they think, you know, I'm going to come over, but it just like, it just didn't make financial sense for me. So that's <laughs> that. What happened uh, to all the other people's shows? They're just on YouTube by themselves or they're just done. Garrett and Steve. Um, yeah. I have uh, well, I seen that on, on your channel. Was that your channel? Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. helping them a little bit. I was hosting them for a couple weeks and now the, the birds have fleed the nest. They're, they're on their own now. Uh, they're already monetized. They're crushing it. They're going to do great. And then Gino's Gavin, talking. after he fired them and was like, Garrett, and it's you get the worst deal of all because you've been here 10 years and you get nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like That's the way that Garrett put it. He was man. like, okay. Then, Garrett then was said, the beginning, the very beginning. Yes. And then uh, Gavin, I suppose, said, well, we would love to have uh, Garrett and Steve over on Censored. Well, why would they you brutally <laughs> kind right. of fired us and now but did you and you didn't even know steve's name during the meeting apparently like mm -hmm. uh now why would we, we want us to, to to come to put our youtube show and we just got all these you know subscribers yeah. and things over there like why would we do mm -hmm. that yeah yeah i don't know what the the reasoning is on that like that people are going to unsubscribe and then resubscribe with. So let's say I have a code and then Gino has a code and then Kumi, everyone's got their own code. So we're all being pulled in different directions that way. Right. Well, um, and then he also said the, uh, you guys are going to get, I'll pay you the same, but he was, then he mentioned to Gino, well, that was only going to last a couple of weeks anyway. And then it was right. going to go to codes. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, well then right. Gino, I'm sorry to say it. Gino was right. Yeah. We can't right. That's really the price for you. Yeah. Is that it went from, you're going to make the same that you made a compound to, um, well, you're, this is only going to be a two week trial. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, let's say after after the two weeks like he could really say anything there's no security there he could just say oh yeah you didn't bring any new subs or oh like you could, he could literally yeah. say anything to justify giving us the boot so i think the reason that people like gavin is because he gets his like peen hard from just fucking around with people like there's just really it's like all right if that's hilarious but you're mm -hmm. like this, this is our kind of lives man but all right <laughs> Yeah, I thought he was more of a, like, uniting type of, you know, like, wanting mm -hmm. things to stay that weren't censored and, like, you know, shows like that. That was mm -hmm. Compound, the free speech yeah. network. Mm -hmm. Gavin's just a, who uh, he's an enigma of a man, right? <laughs> well, he really just um, wanted Anthony, which is fine, but be upfront right. about that. Um, yeah. he, he just... And Anthony wanted to simplify his life. He just of wants course. to do his show. He doesn't have to wants to worry about 
the technical stuff. He doesn't want to worry about, you know, customer service or dealing with like uh, an angry tweets or something. I mean, yeah. angry tweets, he's great. He's great at, he can, he'll shoot right back. But, um, the, the boss like stuff, you know, any of the, any, anything a boss would handle. He didn't really want to do because mm -hmm. he's always been talent. He's always just been like a funny guy with a great show. And he's a yeah, radio. I don't want to deal with that shit and, either. Uh, and he had been through a lot with the heart attacks and the, the quadruple bypass. So he, you know, understandably mm. just looking to like offload responsibility. Yeah, and and he sure. had been putting a lot of his own money into that studio and into the, the salaries of the booth boys for, for several years. So he kept it open probably longer because he is such a good man, probably longer yeah. than it was, you know, financially yeah. great for him, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I, I remember even uh, when I got married last year, or even when I got engaged, which was 22, I remember thinking like, God, is Anthony even going to still be in New York by the time my wedding comes around, which was last summer. And like, so he hung around in New York longer than anybody thought because it just, that house build in South Carolina was, was taking a while. And, yeah, he went from doing a, a like an outside studio, like a separate studio build and like maybe like a pool house situation to then he just did a room in his house and it was like a different kind of studio. So and it's like, yeah, yeah, same thing uh, as Scruffy Mail says, I don't blame Ant for taking it easy. I feel mm -hmm. the same way he has earned it. I'm like, if he wanted to straight up retire and stop doing anything, I would be a great enjoy your life, buddy. You've like... <laughs> you've been a net positive in, in the world of uh, broadcasting. So, you know, feels the same. I think the booth boys feel the same and the booth yeah. woman. Yeah. Love you guys. Thank you for the chats. Thank you for the comments. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. All right. Love you guys. Oh, I don't even want to leave. This candle smells so good. I don't want to leave. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Love you all. Join the discord feet. Love you all. Wow. You guys are awesome. Bye guys. Bye. Now I'm really leaving. Love you. Bye.